What's up guys, everything Apple Pro here. And besides the new Samsung Galaxy S7, LG announced a new killer flagship device today as well, the LG G5. So on this channel, I don't review or talk a lot about LG. It's not a very well-established brand here in America. I mean, they've been around for a while, but not a very large amount of people buy their phones. But I think that's about to change with the new LG G5. This thing is uh, great in many aspects. It's actually exploring a new segment of smartphones. Uh, not a lot of companies do this modules so you can interchange and change modules in the LG G5 to achieve different functions and I'll get into that later with this video and in this video I wanted to talk about how it compares to the iPhone 6s so the reason I'm comparing it to a 6s not a 6s plus is because the 6s is more closely related to it the LG G5 actually shrinks the screen size from 5.5 to 5.3 inches meaning it no longer competes well with the iPhone 6s plus but more or less for me I see it as a direct competitor of the iPhone 6s S. Now, while the LG G5 may not be as impressive as the Samsung Galaxy S7 or S7 Edge, it still has a lot of perks, and it's actually closer in similarity to the iPhone 6S than it is to the Galaxy. I'll tell you why. So, build-in materials. The LG G5 is actually LG's first flagship phone to feature a unibody aluminum shell. Now, this makes wireless charging impossible for the LG G5, which is a drawback, but the new design is actually quite nice. I'm actually 50-50 on it. I do like it. However, the modular design seems a little bit strange. There's just a huge space, empty space on the bottom of the phone that I'm not a big fan of, but the design is better definitely than the LG G4. A few things have been shifted around, the cameras on the back, a dual lens module by the way, and it looks a lot like a Nexus 6P, which I really like that design. It was quite nice. It has Gorilla Glass 4 on the front, and as we know, the 6S has the aluminum 7000 series and the dual ion glass. So these things are pretty similar material-wise. Design-wise, the LG G5 is actually gonna be the slightly larger phone, the 6S being the slightly smaller one, probably a little bit more comfortable to hold. Uh, it's got that curved glass, and the curved housing itself. So of course the footprint on the iPhone 6s will be smaller. It is a lighter phone. Overall, you know, it is easier to hold and use one-handed because it has a smaller display. 4.7 inches versus 5.3 of the LG G5. A clear advantage for LG in this case. Now both displays are actually IPS LCD, meaning that we don't have OLED here. So IPS LCD standard on both of these guys. The only difference is the resolution and size. The iPhone is slightly smaller, lower pixel density of course, which is a drawback, but when we actually have these panels and we'll test the video on them, we'll see which one is superior in terms of quality and color. Now, technology that's unique to each of these, always on technology with the LG G5. So LG says that this technology doesn't necessarily mean worse battery life. You know, on Android, when you have an OLED display and have this tech, you know, you can individually light up the pixels, not so on an LCD, meaning the entire LCD must be lit up in order to use this technology. But LG says that 0.8 of a percent will be drawn for this feature per hour on a fully charged phone. So that's not so bad if you wanna have an always on available display. For the iPhone, you have 3D touch tech, which is a pressure sensitive display. We all know it, we all know what it is. So uh, it's nothing really we need, you absolutely need in a phone, but it's nice to have and with time, the features are developing for it. So the LG G5 is literally a clone of the Samsung Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge in terms of power and internal specs. So we've got that Snapdragon 820, which actually replaces the Snapdragon 810. It's a smaller nanometer construction and it fixes the famous overheating issue with the Snapdragon 810. It's pretty much what the 810 should have been, the 820 is. On the iPhone side, you have the 1.8 gigahertz dual core Apple A9 chip. Nothing special, but quite extraordinary power for the numbers it puts out. The Snapdragon 820 clocks in at 2.15 gigahertz for four of the cores. Four of the cores are 1.6 gigahertz. This is to balance power and efficiency for whenever you need it. Pretty much standard in most smartphones nowadays. The Adreno 530 GPU, a huge upgrade from the older one in the Snapdragon 810 that was used. We'll actually need to use it in person to get the benchmarks and all that, but the iPhone 6S, uses the built-in GPU and uh, the M9 co-processor. So I'm very curious to see how these will stack up on the actual Geekbench and other benchmarks. So four gigabytes of RAM DDR4 standard on the G5, two gigabytes on the iPhone 6S. Now I like what LG did with her G5 in terms of storage. So they only have one storage option and that's 32 gigabyte. You know, they didn't actually penny pinch their customers in order to upgrade the storage. They offered a removable, expandable micro SD slot, just like the S7 and S7 Edge on the same tray as the SIM card. So you'll easily be able to replace the SIM card and SD on one tray. Awesome. The best part is it's upgradable, 
to two terabytes of data. Theoretically, I mean, if you could buy one in the future, this thing is future-proof in terms of storage. No need to worry about that. It's like having the cloud in your phone always, no matter if you have the service or not. So I think that's amazing. The Galaxy S7, if you guys know, is only upgradable up to 200 gigabytes. So clear advantage for the G5. So the cameras, and this is where things get a little bit interesting. The LG G5 has two cameras. So it's actually taking cue from the old HTC M8, which actually had a similar technology and it uses two camera modules in order to get better depth of field, selective focus, even a wider angle when taking video or photo. So one of these lenses is 16 megapixels with a 1.8 f-stop aperture. The other is an 8 megapixel with a 2.4 f-stop aperture. So combined, this equals a very capable shooter, probably something that rivals the Galaxy S7 possibly, although on paper, it's looking quite good. A lot more impressive than the S6. 2.2 f-stops aperture, you know, nothing too impressive, but it's actually a very capable camera. I loved it in my video comparison test. I think it's a very capable one, but the LG G5 has laser autofocus, versus focus pixels, so I don't know. We'll have to test them out to see how they compare. The G5 does have optical image stabilization, so something the 6S doesn't have, you gotta go to a 6S Plus in order to get that feature. But when you do have it, it's quite nice. As for video capability, pretty similar here. However, the iPhone 6S can do 1080p at 120 frames per second, 60 frames per second on the G5, and we don't know the slow motion capability just says it has slow motion, uh, they don't clarify on that. Front facing, eight megapixels on the G5, five on the iPhone 6S. However, the 6S has an advantage here. It has true tone flash, you know, color selective for your environments, and it gets you the perfect picture every time. Now, when we get to batteries, there is a very distinct difference here. 2800 mAh on the G5 and 1715 on the 6S. However, one of these is removable and a lot bigger than the 6S one. So even though it's a little bit smaller than the G4's battery, it is removable. Actually, the entire bottom portion of the phone comes out and it's called the magic slot. So this is where you put your modules and LG actually demoed a couple on stage at the keynote. Basically, one of them was a hi-fi analog to digital converter or vice versa for the phone for uh, people that produce music, an additional headphone jack in there and some extra battery in there as well. Another one was a camera add-on which pretty much had 1100 mAh battery inside of it, a shutter button, and you can actually zoom in using a rolling shutter. I thought that was a pretty awesome idea. Not only is it more comfortable to hold, to use as a camera, it adds extra battery life. Just the fact that these modules can add different functions to the device, there will be so many more that are coming. LG is promising. Now with these modules, there's the battery. You can replace the battery using one of these modules, possibly even upgrade it using an even bigger one in the future. And the G5 actually supports quick charge 3.0, meaning you can go from zero to 80% in just 35 minutes. That blows my mind. I mean, where it takes like three to four hours on my 6S to get to that level of charge so quickly, you know, that's amazing. Now, when it comes to wireless, pretty standard here, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi on both of them, Bluetooth 4.2 capability on both of them. However, the LG G5 is actually twice as fast in LTE download speeds theoretically. So it can get up to 600 megabits download speed per second, whereas the iPhone can only do 300. So this thing is, you know, quite future proof. No carrier will do that. Good luck finding one, but it's good to have, I guess. The LG G5 will ship with Android Marshmallow 6.0, whereas the iPhone has iOS 9.3. It's also running a uh, custom skin from LG, simplified, less color, you know, more flat of a design. So that's that iPhone has their own interface, you know, that's your personal opinion, so I'm not gonna go there, but it definitely does not run a stock version of Android. LG is keeping it quiet on the price, but it's expected to start at about $600 for the 32 gigabyte option. And, you know, depending on where you are, what carrier you're buying it from, it might be different, but buying it unlocked, it's expected to be $600, which is a very, very fair price, considering the iPhone starts at $650 quite a difference there, but it might be from 600 to 800, who knows, but rumor has it 600 right now. They're only saying that it's releasing in April. We know that the S7 can get pre-ordered as soon as February 23rd, but this one's gonna have to wait a little bit longer. I'm very curious to test the LG G5 against the S7. They're running the exact same hardware. Who knows which interface, you know, TouchWiz or this LG one, which will run better and get a better result. I'm very curious to see. As for colors, dark gray, pink, silver, and gold for the G5, and of course the standard colors for the 6S. And you know, that's just about it. The LG G5 has 
a very bright future. You know, they did something bold, modules. We've had talks for so long about the Motorola phone, the Aura project, and you know, nothing's ever come of it. You know, interchangeable modules on the phone. Even this, this is a good start, just one module. To be able to change that and achieve different things with a phone is really impressive. I'm very happy that LG took that step forward. It's a very bold step, but something that instantly differentiates them, and hopefully in the future, it'll be a huge selling point for it. But right now, you know, there's not much available for that in terms of modules except for the couple that LG is selling and uh, we'll see where that gets us but thanks so much for watching guys LG G5 will be covering everything for it in the future video of course when it is released as well as the Samsung Galaxy S7 so stay tuned for all of those guys have a great day peace